Um, thanks, Jens. Jens has given me the countdown. Um, I, I prepared nothing whatsoever to say here because uh, this is all rather like a lot of things that have happened in the last few days done at short notice, so I apologise if I ramble. Um, uh, I obviously am delighted, as we all are in the World Blind Union, that we have a treaty. I'm delighted that it's not just a, a treaty, but it's a treaty that would appear to address all of the key requirements that we had of this treaty. I'd just like to underline that we didn't come to WIPO um, because we wanted a treaty per se. We came to WIPO because we had an important problem to solve that happened to fall in the realm of copyright law, and therefore we took an interest in copyright law only on that basis, not on the basis of a wider ideology for or against copyright law with a view to extending it, reducing it, or whatever. It was to solve a problem for a group of people who had very scant and have very scant access to books. So it's worth reiterating that at this point because some people suggested that maybe we had a different agenda and we said we didn't as we tried to get a treaty and now we have a treaty I can reveal to you that we still don't because <laughs> that's, that's not our, our issue. Um, and, and on that note, uh, touching on the, the publisher uh, and the rights holder concerns about this treaty which have been well expressed so and they're no secret, you know, we, we never came here uh, with a view that it would be fun to try and generate those concerns and aggravate those concerns. We, we, we no doubt did that nonetheless, but that wasn't our, our um, aim when we came here. So um, it reminds me a little bit of the, the copyright exception in the UK when that was being argued over and brought in. It was a bit, a bit before my time, but I know the history of it. Um, there were a lot of concerns about that too, and, and now that it's in place, and it's been in place for 13, no, about 10 years, uh, those concerns have gone away and I very strongly feel that that will happen with this treaty too from the rights holder side. Um, that's enough perhaps about me talking about what I think will happen for the rights holders. Of course they, they're entitled to a view that may be different to that. From our perspective we do think that this will open up a significant new chapter in reading as it were for blind, um, partially sighted and print disabled people. It won't solve all the problems. Jens has pointed out a couple of other things that need to be done that are not small things. They're very, very significant things. But it would be wrong to ever characterise our campaign here as one which said, if we get this treaty, all our problems are over. But we had a legal blockage that needed to be removed to facilitate, as the title suggests, access. It will do that and it will make a huge difference for a, a, a group of people who really need all the help they can get, including in this case the removal of legal barriers which, which don't need to be there and which can be removed safely. So that's all I need to say, I think, unless anyone has questions. And I know I've managed to gain 50 seconds, uh, so there we go. Thank you. Uh, I had a professional experience of diplomacy for around 20 years. From that experience I can say that this is a historic moment really because I have not seen a, a, an agreement like this before. So since we have this agreement and now we have established the right of uh, cross-border uh, exchange and also the direct distribution to the beneficiary, I would like to know from the, my good friend from Publishers Guild is here that will, do you see any change of role for the publishers here? I mean, will it be business as usual or do you see any <laughs> change of role? This is one thing and another small question to Gopa and Miss Cox maybe that some of uh, us are saying that the right of translation may not have got proper attention and some of us are, are saying that probably it has got more than fair of attention in the agreed, uh, agreement that we have now. So what is your idea about it? I mean whether it has been uh, covered satisfactorily or you think that what might be the outcome or future impact? about the agreement that we have reached. Thank you. Second thing I will say, uh, thank you for those questions. Uh, what is the role of publishers now that we have an exception? Um, it is interesting to see and to note that um, only within the debate about the WIPO Treaty has there been any um, uh, hostility or, uh, of involving publishers in uh, more and more in the provision of accessible format copies. Uh, the reality is that out there, and in particular in countries uh, where the need is in local languages, 
um, there is no other solution really, no other effective public policy solution than to help the publishers um, create accessible format copies. Uh, Bangladesh is a very interesting example uh, because uh, we know a little bit about accessibility in, in Bangladesh. And we have learned there, for example, that school books are virtually all created by government publishing houses. And um, these don't have copyright problems, these don't have sales problems, these um, have, uh, the, the problem of access has nothing to do with copyright law, it has to do with getting these organizations, these public uh, bodies, to actually uh, adapt a technology which can then uh, serve the visually impaired people. So uh, we hope uh, that um, you know, had there been a capacity building clause in here, we would be able to use that to um, create, to help those publishers create the school books from scratch in accessible format copies. And um, I hope that will happen irrespective of this treaty. And I'm, 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 you know, there's so many things that need to be done. And Dan has said that <coughs> this, is, this is not the, the, the only solution. This is part of the solution, and the solution for countries. Uh, in with uh, languages where there are no accessible copies in other countries, uh, they will need to be looking for other places than this treaty uh, to solve the problem. Thank you. Gopal, you take the next question. Yeah. And, um, um, Sam, I am here to analyze, but the initial reaction is that it neither reduces or extends, right? So there are countries having translation right part of the reproduction right, so those countries can enjoy the translation and it's uh, part of the uh, deal now. So, neither extends or reduces means that. Dan, you want to say something about that? Go. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's working. Just building on what Jens says and perhaps having a slightly nuanced take of what Jens is saying. Um, this treaty is, as you say, part of the, the solution. Uh, uh, nothing in this treaty. The fact that this treaty doesn't refer to capacity building in, 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 the, in the way it may otherwise have done doesn't stop any capacity building from going ahead. The fact that a law exists doesn't stop capacity building, it doesn't make capacity building happen either. Um, and and um, the, the, the law is without prejudice, essentially, to other things that can happen. I mean, the, the, there was a lot of debate about um, Article J and whether Article J should include all sorts of things uh, about um, agreements that can happen outside of a, of a legal requirement. So you have a law, you have essentially copyright exceptions which allow you to make, um, uh, make and send books, that's great uh, um, as far as it goes, um, but there's no need to say in that law which is essentially just giving you permission to do those things, oh we must do this, 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 this and this capacity building thing. The fact that a law said it or didn't say it, it wouldn't stop you from doing it. So there is a uh, the stakeholder platform on WIPO and there are a whole bunch of other initiatives, whether or not this law had mentioned them wouldn't stop us from doing them. And, you know, my organisation works a lot with, with publishers in the UK on, on, a, on a bunch of initiatives that are nothing to do with the national exception or this law, uh, and I'm sure the WBU will work with publishers, organisations and others on, on improving the situation. Again, nothing to do with this law, but we did need this uh, law as well to ensure that when we can't work with publishers or when, there are, you know, when the need arises, we're not stopped from uh, making books available um, simply. Uh, you know, so it's a question of um, let's have the law to allow us to do it and then let's also do those other things. It's not an either-or kind of scenario. Very clear. Thank you for that, Dan. Jim, you have the last question from the floor. Sure. Thank you. So, um, Talking about some of those multilateral sort of activities, there's this thing called TIGER, which was set up as a pilot for um, sort of interchanging materials between authorized entities. Does not support direct distribution to end users. The World Blind Union pulled out of it at a certain point in this, in this area. A lot of money was spent, not a lot of books have been exchanged. So I want to draw, direct this to Jens and Dan. What's the future of Tiger in a post-treaty world? Jens is handing me the microphone. <laughs> Thank you, Jens. So it's funny, the last couple of months with the campaign for this treaty, I haven't been focusing my thoughts on what the future of Tiger is in a post-treaty world. I've been wondering about whether we'd have a treaty um, and, and, and therefore you'll forgive me if I haven't got as clear an answer as I otherwise would have. But look, it's another, it's, it's what I just said, you know, we need to do uh, voluntary 
work with publishers, which the treaty doesn't stop us doing at all, um, and we will do that where it makes sense to do it. So if Tiger it allows quick, efficient receipt of digital files that we can turn into accessible books, and it allows us to send accessible books uh, to another country in a way that is uh, that is better than we would get if we just used the treaty provisions, then that is absolutely fine and we would be interested and we note that a lot of money has been spent. We, just to be clear, we suspended our participation in the state government <coughs> platform of Tiger rather than pulling out, and that sounds like a, a nice uh, fine definition difference, but in fact it's significant because suspending something means you may reanimate it, whereas pulling out means you're walking away and you're not interested. And we 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 uh, will want to uh, pursue any uh, agreement that can help build access, as long as it is an effective one and it's a, a efficient in terms of resources. So that, I hope that answers it a little bit. Thank you.